Alright everyone, all aboard the hype train, we got news for Sword Art Online Alicization Liquoris. Mind you, these major news are just the tip of the iceberg as the SAO Beaters meeting is happening in just two days with a whole lot more info on SAO anime, light novels and games. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified when I'll be covering the major news on Sunday as well. But don't underestimate today's news either, we got our first public gameplay demo footage from the pre-Beaters meeting stream with Yosuke Futami-san, Takeon-san and Kawai-san. This appears to be the build that they have showcased behind closed doors a little while ago, but instead of Kirito and Yujiro being playable in Rulid, it was Kirito and Alice this time around. SAO Game Info Twitter account also shared footage of the Kirito vs Yujiro Synthesis 32 demo as well. Now of course I will talk about all of these in great detail as well as interesting bits that Futami-san mentioned on the stream. As always shout out to Kishimenas, the wiki overlord for his translations here. But if you prefer to watch them without my commentary or the news, both of them are available on my channel. Just click the icon on the top right and come back here after watching them. Also these are obviously not my live reactions because when I speak for 16 minutes I don't want to just ramble and waste your time. I actually want to discuss things, talk about proper information and speculate on circumstances without hiding information from you just because it benefits my own agenda. If I were to purposefully withheld information, wildly and baselessly speculate, mislead you and not even state that my wild speculations are about 99% baseless rambling, well, what a horrible person I would be for wasting your time that way. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be starting any drama but if someone starts it, I, I may as well ridicule this situation further, throwing jabs and then deleting videos. <laughs> What a drama over there. <laughs> You'll hear my response on that next week or something. That the self inflicted petty drama is low on my priority list. Now, the stream was an hour long. Most of it was just an introduction to Sunday's Beaters meeting. So, aside from showcasing you this amazing screenshot from the stream with Futami san and Best Girl Charlotte, I'll be moving straight to the final 10 minutes for the Licorice reveals. This stream was followed up by the Integral Factor weekend stream. But that's gonna be another video. Futami-san grabbed the controller and started the first public showcase of the Alicization Licorice demo. Mind you, this build is very old at this point. It's apparently the same build they showcased behind closed doors months ago. But instead of Yujiro, they made Alice Kirito's partner. And you'll see a lot of stuff that doesn't quite feel right due to this, you know, the build being old. But don't worry, back at the studio there is a much more recent build with more features and more polish and considering the contents of the game also covering War of Underworld, according to an early Dengeki article by the way, the game is not likely to be released before April 2020 anyway. So you may as well stop asking about when the game will be released, you can be damn sure I will make you know once we got a release date announcement. The demo started in the Rulid village and despite the early build, the overall Rulid is quite lively. The main square was slightly empty when they first started and it only started having some inhabitants when they were leaving the square but that may also be because the game didn't want to pop in NPCs when you spawn in and let them gather around naturally. Hollow Realization had a very similar mechanic here that tried its best to spawn characters outside of your view so they wouldn't just pop up on the screen. Anyways, in the town square we got stores, we got the fountain in the middle along with a well, Sister Azalea's little church where Selka stays as well. In the back you can see the Giga Cedar on one side, the little passageway slash opening within the end mountains on the other side, which Futami makes sure to mention that that is where Kirito fights Ugachi. Thanks Futami-san, we already knew but thank you. You can see a windmill rotating in the back, colorful and dense trees and foliage. This is quite well for a for a very early build mind you. Inside the Rulid village you can also notice frame drops which is to be expected from an early build. There are more signs that this is early in development and this build is not close to release that I will mention when they actually come up. You can also see a variety of icons in the map overview up top. Sorry that it's getting quite blurry when I zoom in like this, but this is the best quality visuals we have as it was a live stream. This feather appears to be a collectible for example, but there are many other icons as well. When Assassin's Creed switched to this style of maps, I was not very happy at first, but over time I realized these were much more useful, you know, the minimalist, the less obstructive than the large minimaps covering the screen with too much information to actually process. Although keep in mind that Futami had mentioned in previous interviews that maps were kind of a work in progress at this point, but we'll see a little of it soon. As we leave the town square there is the town militia and I do hope we'll get to meet Zink and his dad who had more scenes in the novels but were relegated a lot in the anime. 
Futami gives us a tour of Rulid with varying frame rates. We, we see a blacksmith here that is possibly just not implemented in the game yet, because we know there will be crafting and upgrading in the game, which the previously mentioned collectibles will be used for as well, among other things. We got more townsfolk, what seems like a potion icon and a food icon, which are which are possibly just those, either a store or a crafting spot. We don't know because Futami-san laughs and moves on without interacting. Again, he mentioned similar things in previous interviews that these things were not yet properly implemented in this specific build. Futami-san jumps outside of the walls and falls into a riverbed without a river programmed in and followed by more jokes. The windmills around and wheat looks absolutely gorgeous and those perceptive ones can make a small connection here to the War of Underworld trailer and mention that the wheat fields look a little too small compared to that trailer and you're correct but that is no factual error, this is on purpose as the Giga Cedar is still standing in this instance and thus preventing the crop fields from expanding, you know? The, the cool bit of trivia for you. I have to say, it's really nice to see people actually minding their own business in the world. In Hollow Realization it felt like they were just randomly strolling around everywhere just to make crowd there. This feels a little bit more natural. We see a small hut right next to the wheat fields, which may be where Alice and Kirito stay after the Battle of the Cathedral. Take this with a grain of salt though, as it's a little too close to Rulid to be their actual hut. This is either a false theory or a change they had to make for the game design purposes they have. But here they also showcase that you can switch the control of a character on the go seamlessly, similar to Axel World vs Sword Art Online, which is an absolutely great addition. I'm sure many people were looking forward to this bit of news here. Another sign that this is an early build comes up when Alice is running, her hair is borderline rock solid while her cape is more jittery than the worst ragdoll physics clipping through each other constantly. These are minor nitpicks and inconsequential for a game almost a year away from release. As we stray further into the forest though, wildlife starts picking up and I'm pretty certain th those are the same skull spiders from Halo Realization, followed by some regular spiders as well. And while Alice keeps running, the time you see on the top left is the demo time limit of 10 minutes counting down, that would be in the final release, and bottom right is the time and weather of Underworld. Keep an eye out on that as you'll see the sun slowly start setting in a bit. There's a mushroom there that seems to be a collectible without a prompt implemented and stuff, but finally we get to see some combat here. Now Alice's combat is quite slow according to this footage, but when you check for example the Kirito vs Yujo gameplay on the other trailer, on the other footage, you'll see that their combat is quite fast over there, not on the level of Hollow Realization but still faster than Alice here, which I'll speak more in detail later, but while I let the footage run here I got three theories on this. Now obviously Hollow Realization was a JRPG with very fast mechanics, Alicization, Licorice won't be that fast, but the theory number one is in my opinion, is the most likely theory in this case, is that the swiftness of a character depends on their combat style. Remember, Alice is a graceful and powerful knight, so she has more of a focused and calculated moveset. Kirito and Yuji on the other hand use Aincrad style, which is all about swiftness and the flow to adapt and retaliate rather than a showcase of power. So, for example, if Berkuli would be here, he would certainly move even slower than Alice, with borderline zero grace but with absolute raw and concentrated power, whereas someone like Eldri would be fast but suffer cooldowns due to the whip, and Fizel and Linel would be incredibly agile with their daggers. Second theory is that it's about character levels, properties, passive abilities, battle skills, etc, which there is no way to confirm at the moment without playing the game. Or third, and certainly not as unlikely as you may think at the beginning. In this specific build they were testing certain variables regarding fight speed to figure out balancing stuff, hence why characters have different tempos. Or it may also just be that the testers complained in this build regarding the combat speed, so internally they actually did increase the speed and release the Yuju and Kirito trailer with those adjustments, which was not applied to this specific build of course. Anyways, the large dodo birds are not very dangerous as you have probably realized at this point, however one of the things I love is the battle movement in general as well as sacred arts usage, you'll see it more clearly in the boss battle in a bit, but you can generate elements and just keep them stored in your offhand while you keep fighting with your sword, which should allow some nice combos. We get to see the map here along with fast travel and keep in mind this is just the Rulid village map instance and it's quite big. 
You see Giga Seeder in the middle, preventing the cropland from expanding to the south. A bunch of icons, you know, the locations of the boss we're about to face in the lower left. Material collectibles in green, crafting locations in grey-brown possibly. Fast travel areas in blue and dark purple. Seems like militia or statue icons. I saw something similar to a statue earlier in the trailer, that's why I'm mentioning it. But militia seems like a more likely possibility here as the statue seem to be a part of the small ruins, I, I don't know. Anyways, after the fast travel, we'll have some skill talk along with the spider boss, but first, another sign that this is an early build. Uh, getting to the spot starts the boss jumping up cutscene, the animation, but it doesn't stop Alice's running animation. I, I like this small nitpicks, just bear with me. The boss is quite tough, but don't worry, it will not be as hard as you see here, both Alice and Kirito are 3 levels underleveled here. While you watch the combat and skills, I would like to talk about the tutorial screen and your combat options to make things a little clearer as you watch. I'll show it to you for a second and fade it away to not block the fight visuals. L1 is partner commands, you'll remember that from Hollow Realization. L2 is to switch characters on the go. R1 is your skill palette, R2 is sacred arts. R1 plus L1 is quote unquote time stop. But we're not sure what that means exactly, sure it probably has something to do with stopping time, but does not appear to be the charging mechanic you'll see in a bit that slows things down a little. You can draw and sheath your swords with up, you can lock targets with down, change targets with left and right, square is your regular attack, triangle is your jump attack, circle is dodge slash guard, X is step, and if you press the right stick it showcases your arts gauge, which we are not certain if it's about sacred arts or if they're referring to something else as quote unquote arts as well, similar to how fatal bullet used weapon arts as something. You can see in the demo that only thermal and cryogenic elements are usable in the palette. Futami-san mentioned this as well, stating that in this specific build they are locked to those two only, but the full game will have a whole lot more, and the same can be said about battle skills and sword skills as well. The tutorial screen had five of each listed, battle skills being healing force for HP regen, soul charge for SP regen, blood warrior for attack up, dual shout for aggro up, and weapon batch for stun, whereas sword skills has a lot of familiar names as expected. One hit skill Warple Strike with Guard Break, the skill Kirito used against Chudelkin and Quinella in two very distinctly different ways, and I'll talk more about Warple Strike in a bit when Alice does something special. Two hit skill Vertical Arc that Kirito used against Ilfang the Cobalt Lord as well as during his testing at the Academy. Two hit skill Snake Bite that Kirito used against Egom Zakarite in the Zakaria chapter to break his sword, which was <laughs> almost completely cut from the anime. A non canon skill Photon Eraser comes up on the list and the 3 hit skill Savage Fulcrum that Kirito once again used during his training at the academy. But yeah, as the fight goes on you can see the weather changing from sunny to duskier to night and it's a long fight, but one last key mention takes us back to the Whirlpool Strike. At a certain point Futami decides to charge up Alice's Whirlpool Strike and, well, <laughs> well he fails the first time around as he is staggered by the boss, the second try does succeed and we see an incarnate version of Warple Strike here, the exact one Kirito used against Chudelkin from far away where instead of the sword piercing the enemy, a light beam shot from the sword pierces it, the same way Kuroyukime's Warple Strike works in Axel World. So you can potentially charge up your skills in Licorice which can grant various incarnate benefits based on 3 tiers, guessing from this visual. Well, that is it from the Rulit demo, there's still the Yujiro vs Kirito demo. Unlike the Rulit footage however, Yujiro and Kirito duel was not a live demo just for full disclosure and is likely to be from a more recent build. As you can see characters moving much faster in combat in this duel. Unless duel mechanics are different, which I don't think is the case, this is a proof that this is definitely a newer build here. I love how they colored Yujiro's eyes in the game engine better than the hand drawn and colored anime did. You know, really focusing on that emptiness, but the duel immediately starts with Yujo's either perfect weapon control or possibly even memory release, uh, considering the whole room and Kirito are immediately covered in ice, and Yujo does not use any commands here either to really distinguish it, but still, the combat is much more fluid here and much faster. Yujo easily deflects most attacks, which makes me think this is more of a scripted event. In fact, in one of the earlier trailers, we already see Kirito lose this event here, causing Alice to intervene. Yujo's parry and unleash skills seem to be particularly annoying, but understandable if this is a fight we must lose at all case. The fight is pretty standard until we reach the sword lock phase. This is interesting, however, because the previous parries by Yujo did not produce 
this sword lock instance so this may be a scripted event at a certain health but it may also be the special parry mechanic Futami promised a while back saying that he didn't want a parry to be a simple button press so a quick time event resulting from a parry leading into a sword lock seems very likely and from a pacing standpoint feels quite nice here. Some people even mentioned it feels a little like the parry in Sonic and the Black Knight which yeah, yeah, it, it does, and Black Knight is an underrated game. I, I feel like this is a good place to plug that thought process in. Bla Black Knight is underrated, guys. But that was the final bit of crucial information. We had a couple of theorizing based on actual logic in this video as well, so I hope certain people are taking notice. I shared everything we got from this reveal and I will see you on Sunday with the grand reveals from the Beers Cafe event, so subscribe and absolutely tap that bell icon for notifications. And if you're still here, we recently celebrated 25k subscribers, I decided to go for a quiet celebration because I'm still in Turkey with shit internet, I can barely upload stuff, but I did a special merch to celebrate 25k subs. So. You can check that on my Teespring store, link is in the description and in the pinned comment. We got awesome t-shirts, awesome hoodies, uh, we got mugs, I think I got something else, I don't know, I created that two weeks ago, I, I, I forgot. So, if you want to mark yourself as one of the original 25k when we actually reach PewDiePie levels, feel free to check them out. Unlike the other stuff I currently have up, this 25k will be a limited time run, I'm guessing I'll keep it around for two, maybe three months at most. So don't rush if you wanna get something and feel free to share your feedback, do you like the hoodies, t-shirts, cups, etc. If you don't, well, what would have made them better for you, those kinds of stuff, you know, I'll be looking forward to hearing your feedback. As always, thank you very much for watching and a special thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members. Remember that you can join those special ranks by supporting me here on YouTube or on Patreon. I'll also start sharing monthly discount codes for merch exclusively for you guys, so that's something to keep in your mind. But. Yeah, subscribe and hit that bell, we'll get a news explosion on Sunday, so stay tuned. Until then, stay cool.